Let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans 8, 26. Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit help, helps us in our infirmities. Or the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not how to pray as we ought. Yeah. Play a little louder. We know not how to pray or we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. If your Bible is yours, underline that word, the will of God. Verse 28. And we know. Say we know. Say it again. Louder. What do we know? How many things? And we know that all things. And we know that all things. And we know that all things, this knowing can only come from the art of a prayerful person. It's not psychology. It's not bold face. It is boldness. The only way to know that all things work together is if you have first of all submitted yourself to the Spirit of God interceding through you. If you have not passed through that first phase, you cannot experience the second phase. You know why I'm saying this? We will talk about something that will lead to mercy on Sunday. Still talking about the seasons of life. What some people need is the mercy of God. And we'll address that on Sunday. Part of the seasons, because we'll talk about storms of life. What happens to people who are now married wrongly? Is that the end? No. What happens to a Christian when he has made a... Listen to me. Tell everybody you know to be around on Sunday. You know, there is something about... I believe that is what God is trying to correct in the church. People want to pray and see a change out there. But that is not God's method most times. He wants to explain to you how the change will happen so that you can repeat the change. One of the reasons why Africa as a continent is backward, we don't seek to know. So a white man truly sat down. He saw a bird flying. Our forefather saw the bird also. If Africans saw something unique, they would start worshipping it. White will sit down to ask how come that bird? So after thinking and thinking and thinking, they came up with aeroplane. Inventions don't come from Africa. We don't seek to know. We just want something to happen. Did you get that? Somehow we have brought it into Christianity. You are blessed. Amen. You are blessed. You just want to go out and see the blessing. You cannot write a book on what you know nothing about. It's what you're reading. When Kenneth Egi was on his sick bed and he was supernaturally raised by God, if when he prayed, he just got healed and he got up, there would not be books of faith like we have now. There's no man of God on earth that did not pass through Kenneth Egi. Because when he was lying down there, he was interested in healing. Beyond the healing, God was interested in teaching him how healing functions. So Mark 11, that he read, whatsoever, that is what the old Rema is built on. Mark 11, 23 and 24, they were against our favorite scriptures till he died. You know, it was, he laid hands on Pastor Debwe. There's no man of God that did not pass through again, or popular man of God or not. He had discipled nations. He is dead, his book. There's no Christian book I've entered on that, any nation that you will not see again, as one of the most common books. Because of Mark, God could have healed him. And that's how many people want. Mark, people want. 
But see, God started explaining to him what it means to have faith. He was on the bed there. Then he read Mark 11, 24. Whatever you ask when you pray, you will receive. And it shall be yours. Then he said, Father, in Jesus' name, I've been an invalid for 18 months. I was born with a heart condition. I want to be healed. Then he started checking his body. No healing. What's going on? Is your word true or not true? There was time he closed the Bible and he threw it away. Then the Holy Spirit will come to him and be like, you look at that scripture again. Then for the first time, he says, as if light entered the room. He just saw, whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe, then you receive. Did you get that? Very simple, simple enough to be missed. That it is not that you receive, then you believe. You believe, then you receive. So God told him that when you pray, you were checking your leg. You want to receive before you believe. You need to believe before you receive. So he began to say, Lord, what do I do? God said, follow that scripture. Believe, then you shall receive. Pray again. When you finish praying, lift up your hands and begin to thank God that you are healed. And he began to do that. And one day he walked around the room and he went back to bed. He didn't let anybody know. Because for months he had been in bed. And then one day they were serving breakfast downstairs or there, and then he went there to join them to eat. That, that simple knowledge that the Holy Spirit gave to him, he has written books upon books on healing. The books have went around the world. The books have healed millions around the world. Can I take it? More people have been ill reading this book than those who have attended this crusade. More books. God is more interested. But you see, we must seek to know. Say no. That's what that, that, that's what it says. And we know that all things. So there is a knowing that God wants you to know. I think the word is saying though. To know a conviction that can never be taken away from you. So many people are praying about many things. Have you read Psalm 107? Verse 20. They cried unto him. He did not heal them. What did he do? He sent his word. And his word healed them. Oh God, I need a job. I need a job. And then you check your mail. You want to just say a letter. God is interested in there is something he will teach you that apart from job, when you need another thing in life and you apply it again, it will come. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Are you with me? The story that Pastor Boju told us, they are to leave Nigeria because the wife couldn't give up for about 11 or so years. They were all in life together and to avoid family talking. Because by medical standard, they are consulted a doc, doc, consultant here and abroad, and it was sure that she wasn't. So the husband just said, uh, let's just locate. Over there in Europe, nobody cares about whether you have a child or not, so they located. Long and short of it, supernaturally, there was something they saw about meditation and something, and she got pregnant. I think she was on her, she's on her third child now, supernaturally. Now, that's the way I'm going. The husband now applied for a job. Every time he opened that website, when he applied, about 300 whites, British citizen, more qualified. You know, if you don't want to deceive yourself, you will know that you don't stand a chance. When you are in Nigeria located abroad and you are applying for something and 300 citizens of that country more qualified than yourself, you just, they have applied also. I mean, and they are, maybe they are just going to be about four of you. What chance do you have? And God help you, let it be a company that is, uh, the leader is a racist. So, I mean, you don't have a chance. So I, he said that he wanted to pray. And that's what people do at times. We are praying, but you don't really believe the prayer you are praying. It's a common thing. They were praying for the release of Peter. And when Peter came, and the girl said, Peter was the one knocking, they said, you are mad. Why were they praying? It was a prayer meeting for Peter. And Peter showed up and they did not believe. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So sometimes people pray for things. But your heart cannot conceive what you are praying about. And you see, until something happens to your heart, that prayer will not come to pass. That's the truth. It's a, your heart is a gauge of what you can receive and what you can't receive. So it begins with something that has to happen to that capacity inside. Did you get what I've just said now? Hallelujah. Amen. So he will look at that website and be like, wow, I know that. Then he remembered. Oh, this is why 
you don't throw away testimonies. Little, little things and some great things that God has done in your life before, save them. How do you produce another tree? When you eat the fruit, you plant the seed. Sometimes we eat the fruit and eat the seed of the testimony. You should have a book where you have written some strange occurrences that have taken place in your life. Everybody here has got some. Is somebody getting blessed? Have you noticed that was what David did when he faced Goliath? As he saw that massive figure and it looked like he didn't stand a chance, he quickly reminded himself that the Lord who made me to conquer the lion and the bear. Ask your neighbor, what are your lions and your bears that you have forgotten? Ask, ask, ask your neighbor. <laughs> I'm not saying lion appear to you physically. <laughs> that one you become, <laughs> you become say both suddenly. But there are things that you have conquered. Is somebody getting me? So David immediately, as he saw Goliath, stopped, he just played that tape again. How did the 17, maybe it was 16, when, when I was thinking Goliath was 17, maybe when he killed Lion and the bear, maybe it was 14 or 15, he quickly remembered that a mortal man normally wouldn't be able to kill a lion, but God gave a lion. Then next time the bear showed up, automatically this guy would be like, so that guy did the same thing. As he sat beside his computer and he saw that to be honest with himself, his faith couldn't carry praying for that job, but he needed that job. Then he said he reminded himself, if experts, consultants in Nigeria and the UK together have said that your wife cannot give birth, and he was looking at the kids right now in the house, like then he told himself, that one look at his wife at the kids made the unbelief in his heart to collapse. He said, if against all odds, if by what experts said, here are my kids running around the house. Then against all odds also, and if by what experts have said that a black man does not stand a chance among three white, three white, the same thing will happen. And you know what? He got the job. You know what Christa is doing at times? You are confessing. I have the job. Even though inside your heart, your heart is number one guy testifying against your confession. God is saying that, bros, tell the truth. I get what I'm saying. There's something that has to happen to that hand. I just showed one of the ways. If we can recall things that have happened, this is why remember is severally written in the Bible. Remember, remember, remember. You should not forget. Did you get that? Hallelujah. You know, I've, even, I've not even said what I heard. See, anything I say, I just, it, the most important thing is just for the Spirit of God to open your eyes to something. So I started by saying that that word, and we know that all things, it is only those who are given to praying in the Spirit and praying deliberately that can come up with an awareness that is fueled by the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that gives you confidence that all things will work together for your good. That's the Bible. So, 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 so verse 26 says, we know not what to pray for. As we allow the Holy Spirit, as we pray in tongues, allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us, allow our spirit man to pray. What happens is that there is a knowing that comes. And that knowing is important. The reason for the knowing is that the beginning of a miracle might not look like a miracle. David, I know the Bible was careful to tell us that the spirit prayed according, it, it was according to the will of God. In asking God for something, God's will is more important than the outcome you are expecting. And except you are enlightened by the Holy Spirit, your, the result you expect might be different from the will of God. The will of God is always bigger than what you expect. Let me give you a very good example and I'll close here. Listen to me again. See, I think I shared with you on Sunday. As the four lepers were carrying the gift, I'm about to talk about the Bible, I just want to say, as the four lepers were carrying gift from one tent to another, one of them said, we are not doing well. This is a day of good news. I am not a sentimental person at all. I believe in being sincere. If you go for a church service and it does not bless you, 
don't invite anybody. But if you go for a service and the words are moving you and you refuse to tell someone else about it, you are not doing well. I know there are many Christians in this category. It's true. There are people in this church who have written against churches on Facebook who have said they'll never go to church again. Somebody invited them, just one encounter and they changed their mind. Yes. I was preaching at beat you one day. I was a brother at the back. The way we were looking at me, I see if you carry a chair and throw it at me. Because he hated church and preacher. But he's one of the strongest workers here. Now it has happened separately. I was in a, a particular city and the lady that came to pick us, she was one time a big time top aristo. Somebody invited her to be She said that before the message, she made up her mind, I cannot go back to this business again. And she started burning for God. What about you when others are doing this? We had so many first timers on Sunday, maybe 30, I don't know the number. So what I, I sit down there and I look at so many congregations and I ask myself, why is it that the harvest, why is it that the laborers are always few? Could it be, the, could it be one of you? I don't know. It, it, there's no scriptural backing for that. But can this be one of the reasons why it looks like the things of the Spirit don't work in certain lives? Because the four lepers say, if we don't tell you that something bad will happen to us tomorrow, can it be the reason why people go for a meeting? The message so bad, they feel like something is about to happen on Monday morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, nothing happens. Could it, can there can be the reason? Remember, self is opposite of the cross. God wants his lost sheep found. Yes. I finished ministry one day and a lady walked up to me. And she told me, Oh, my father is the general overseer of a church, but he molests young ladies. And she began to cry. This is why some people are angry of us. That is the understanding. They think all of us are the same. Some people think that all that happens in the church, they just go in, they just start collecting your money, ask you to draw money, last fruit, middle fruit, first fruit. <laughs> And that's what some people think. But that is what they have seen. Who is going to give them an opportunity to know that it's not so in many other places? Why do we keep quiet? Anytime we do marriage seminar from Orthodox to everywhere, the next one week, I'm going to be having visitors in the office from other churches. At times, older couples coming to talk about marriage. I told last week or so, about some weeks ago, I was in a particular couple's house for eight hours from 6 to 2 a.m. I left the house 2 a.m. on some serious matter. You can make up your mind. See, I believe this is what I'm saying. I'm going to say that to workers on Saturday. Make up your mind that every Sunday, a new soul, somebody, might even be a Christian that is dissatisfied, somebody, somebody comes to church on your account. And watch what will happen to you. Make up your mind. That's a decision. It's true. Anywhere I am, when I, I, when I was a copper in Kaduna, I sat in NMPC. The church I was attending, Lighthouse, Reverend Shola, this way, is in Abuja, and you can find out. By the time I was leaving, I gave them 24 other coppers. I got to that church, and I was blessed by the teaching of the man. I didn't keep quiet among the coppers. They didn't want to go to I told the rest of them and they started following me. Quite a number. I didn't know I was not a worker. I was just one quiet fellow at the back until one day I went for a party. One of the coppers, one of the I took to, to the church, where you were together. So she was staying in Banawa GRA, somewhere not too far from my house. So I used to go and play there because uh, the, where I was staying was a little tough in terms of strictness and laws. But she was staying the other uh, direct opposite. The man she was staying with, as the man and the woman, they were working for President uh, Officer Jordan. And they would, I mean, I would enter the house, sit down in the room, I would put on the table without anybody. The northern part of the country, apart from the terrorists, they are quite safe. They don't have insecurity like we have in Lagos. The gate man would have gone to play. I, I imagine I would enter the house, open the gate of the house, enter the sitting room and sit down. One day, I went to their kitchen. <laughs> And they are not, and they, they are Christian. They are they, Catholic. They didn't care. The man walking, I'm like, Papa, have you eaten? And then they go out. He might not come back on next next day. The same thing, his wife. So he was throwing a party for his wife, his wife's birthday. So I attended. He bought her a new car. And then I did not know that the wife was my pastor's junior in secondary school. So the pastor came. And the pastor just called my, me by name. I, I was almost entering the I didn't know. So I. 
So they, they, they called me and said, Shola, why are you? So there was confusion on my face. I asked him, is it word of knowledge or how did you get to? Because I never waited for one minute after. So after that, I'm like, I'm like, just go. Then he said that all the people, he said most of the people that joined the church, the part of the form that says who invited you to the church, he said we just kept saying your name, your name, your name, your name. He said, so I stored the name in my head and I asked somebody in the church to show me that guy. He said, so I saw you a long time ago. Isn't that a good commendation? Now, will you do something on what I've just said now? Because the same thing, ERs are many, doers are very few. When you get home tonight, the first thing that will happen is Champions League. And so we forget what we've talked about. <laughs> then pressure at work and this one, that one, then you are. But make up your mind. Do you have a barrel and a paper there? Write it down. Say, today, 2nd of October, I have made up my mind. I am going to be among those who populate them. I will give someone an opportunity to listen to the word of whatever. So write it down. So I'm going to look for the wounded. I'm going to look for people who are not, people who are down, look for people who are not saved and give them an opportunity to be in church. Please write it down. You know what I'm saying you should write down? Because I want you to write it down. What you don't write down, you are not committed to. It's true. They did a survey. Harvard graduating class. You know, over there they do a lot of, they do research a lot, they check things. We don't have here, we don't have statistics here. When we say the, the rate of divorce in Nigeria, we just give it a figure. Because we don't know the figure. Because we don't even know how many we are in the country. No census has been very correct. Hope you know. All our figures we are just managing, we don't know how many. Some say we are 160 million, some say we are 180 million. We will just nod our head. So just find the average. <laughs> Nigeria is interesting. We don't have, we don't have any cars we have. But in America, everything. Lagos tries to have to, to the largest things. But in America, they have everything. Rate of divorce, rate of this one, rate of that one, this one, that one. How many out of the divorce? How many? Uh, how many of the divorce that it was the woman that started that said she wasn't doing it again? How many the man? They have all the evil figures are annoying. So well, what is our business about knowing the fact that they are? <laughs> but see, for record, they have everything, and it's, it's beautiful. Amen. So they were doing this on Harvard graduating class and they discovered those who wrote down their goals 10 years after were more successful than those who did not write down their goals. It's true. Those who had the goals but never wrote it down were more successful than those who did not clearly define their goal. So three groups of people. Some did not even plan and just they are filling with two one I will know what to do outside. But those who said this and this and this are the steps I'm going to take, they were better than those who just had the who, who had no goals. Now, those who said, went beyond saying it and wrote it down. So the Bible said, write the vision and make it plain. It is true. If Moses did not write down what God showed him, we would not have what we have today. And if Paul did not write the canon scriptures. So commitment begins with writing down something. And should I say this to you? When you are praying early hours of the morning, please carry a Bible. Can I, maybe this will shock many of you. Why hasn't the Spirit of God spoken some of some people before? It's not because you are not spiritual enough. It does not waste its words. I have found out. If God tells something you forget, for days He might not tell you any other thing. His words are too precious to be forgotten. So you must be a studious person. Have the Bible and your paper when you are praying. And write down anything the Lord tells you. Don't trick your, don't, don't, don't say to yourself that I will not forget. You will forget. That's why you have Bible and paper. Let your brain rest. Let your Bible work. If you have a plan towards your husband, you are married, write it down. It will help you. If you have made mistakes before, write it down. By you writing. The first thing you discover about writing is that when you are thinking something, you think you've had it thought out clearly. When you want to write, you find that it's not so. To write it correctly, there will be some adjustments you have to make. And most likely, even if you don't refer back to that book again, what you've written that you will likely not forget. Am I helping somebody? Amen. Did you hear what I've just said now? Are you doing something about it? All right. Okay, so let me close this way. So I, I said I was going to use David as an example. So everything I said, just to tell you that, please, 
extend this invitation to people around you for Sunday. Sunday is going to be explosive. This afternoon, for some reasons why I pray, but I cannot say now because I, I, I need everybody to, I, I, it kept dropping in my spirit. What do we share with people who are stranded? And I'm going to show you examples from God's word. Is there something in the Bible like the lawful captive shall be set free? Who is a lawful captive? People can enter into captivity lawfully. That is why people make a bad decision and they are paying for it. Does the provision of the cross, does it cover occurrences like that? So now a Christian woman is in a house. She chose money above common sense. And the man is kicking her. Is that the end of the matter? Will she suffer forever? Now you have uh, you're broken up with somebody who really meant well, who should have been with you, and now you are regret. Is that the end of the matter? What, how far will our mistakes go after being born again? Are there measures that the Holy Spirit can undertake to help us? Can lost grounds be recovered? So we are talking about season of adversity, and I'm talking about I'll be talking about adversity that you create by yourself and the one that is not by yourself. Don't miss Sunday. Is that okay? Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So, let me end with David, what I just said about David. I said that the spirit will pray the will of God, not necessarily what you think. Not necessarily what you think. So it takes God renew your mind or by the revelation of the Holy Spirit to know the, the will of God. So when the daughter was sick, first, second Samuel chapter 12. So David slept with Bathsheba. So Bathsheba got pregnant. Part of God correcting mistake, judging the mistake by the same time having mercy on, the, on somebody. So the, the baby fell sick. When Nathan went and he said, you are the man. Bible said the baby was sick. And David was confused. And David began to fast and pray. Lord have mercy. I'm sure that was when he wrote Psalm 92, Psalm 51. Have mercy, have mercy on me, Lord. In iniquity I was shaping. David had the way of persuading God. And we are going to get to that if time permits on Sunday. Yes. I think if I remember, I will tell some people, you have never walked away even for one day, just one day to settle certain issues of your life. Your mistakes will bury you, except the mercy of God intervenes. And there is a way you can talk to God. There must be a time that you walk away from people, even if it's just one day, to go and pray about your life. That is the only way that the divine hand comes into that situation. But the outcome might not be the way you want it to be, but the outcome will bless you and glorify God. That's what I'm saying. Did you hear that? Hallelujah. So David began to pray. What he expected was for God to heal the child. And he fasted, and he fasted, and he prayed. And by the seventh day, the child died. Unlike some, David would have started complaining. But I believe that David, though he lived the New Testament, Maybe somehow he knew the scripture, somehow, that we know that all things. Because when the child died, and they said the baby is dead, David got up, he went to have his bath, because he had not been, he had been fasting. And he went to the house of God. He came to the household of David Church, and he enjoyed the praise worship. If you think I'm wrong, at least we have to get to heaven to prove me wrong. So not the name of the church he went to. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, and when he got back home, he said, can I have food? Only those who have seen something can talk that way. And they gave him food and he began to eat. Even the elders came and said, this is how the servant decided to talk that way. Ah, when the child was alive, you were fasting, dying, lying down on the floor. Now the child is dead. This is where you should be crying. See, if you are following the Spirit of God, your reactions will be different from that of normal men. So when men are saying there's a curse, <laughs> what to say and what to do will be different. There was famine in the land. Everybody was saving their seed. God told Isaac, Genesis said, you sow in the land and they reap hundredfold in the midst of famine. 
a different reaction. Hallelujah. Are you with me? That's the way of the spirit, a different reaction. So the elders were looking at it. So this is where people should be crying. And David told them that no, in the realm we are from, our reactions are always different. When Jesus turned water to wine, the master of the ceremony came to the groom and he said that every man, that word is a very strong, so every man brings forth the good wine first. When the good wine finishes, then the bad wine. But you know, Jesus reversed the question that in the kingdom of God, the good does not come before bad. For the path of the joy is a light that shines brighter and brighter. In our kingdom, the best is last. And that is how your marriage should look like. Every man. If you marry a man that is not from our kingdom, what that man said will happen. It's an observation. Every man. When he's dating, he opens the door for you. The good wine. <laughs> My sweetheart. You know, he comes to pick you. To take you out or to go somewhere. And you are wasting time painting your face. And he's singing a song. Why the time is great. not feeling the time. I love you, man. I love you. But now you are married. Two minutes to wait. Woman, <laughs> you are wasting my time. The good wine has finished. Now the bad wine. So when people meet a beautiful damsel relationship, the good wine. Ladies do the same thing. Very decent and respectful. The good wine. She comes to see you. You want to carry it. Do you? Oh, no, no, let me do it for you. You are in someone's wedding. She's helping you to look for rice. My sweetheart has not hit. <laughs> well, shortly after that, the good wine finishes. Say, dear, can you help me take something there? And she tells her, what happens to your own <laughs> And the good wine, and now the bad wine. But the Bible says that is every man. But thank God, we are not from the first Adam. We are of God. Our own good wine never finishes. Hallelujah. It never finishes. It gets better and better and better and better. We love our women more after marriage than before marriage. We honor our men more after marriage than before marriage. It's the culture of the kingdom. It's all blessed tonight. This is why you should marry in this church. Yeah. See, if you and your husband are in this church and your husband should offend you, I am the one that will crucify him. Some things we don't need God. <laughs> I'll just say, Heavenly Father, attend to other matters. Let's face this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God it does that. How can this one come to the poor P. Josh to me? And I will not fry P. Josh. Because I love this one so much. If she calls me 1 a.m., I will drive to their house. Yeah. Only one couple in the church. There was a time that they had that issue. I went to meet them in their bedroom. And we all sat on the bed. And that ended the matter. Five years have come and gone. No fight again. Because I told them that I don't dabble into what I'm not involved. But if I'm involved, I was part. Somehow, I don't counsel people. But I was there on your wedding day. Even if it's just to eat rice. You can't separate you. We had to arrive. Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't fight. You cannot fight. Amen. <laughs> Is someone blessed tonight? Praise the Lord. Say we know that all things. Every time I preach, I get all kinds of messages on Facebook. People think that in this church, we are very funny. Yes, we are. I enjoy an atmosphere that is full of life. I have passed the message across without frowning my face. And I believe you are all blessed already. Glory to God. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You know, we never like to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Coming into Christ is beyond joining a church, is beyond a religion. It is joining God's family. And that is done when you believe in Christ Jesus. So I just want to lead you right away now. If you, are, if you want to give your heart to Christ, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus... I believe that you died and rose again and that you paid for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior and from today I belong to you. If you have said those words, we'll believe you are born again. You are part of God's family right now. 
you can go ahead and rejoice about it. And if you want to contact us, just check. The address is written on the screen. God bless you. We love you. Stay blessed.